So this case occurred in March 22nd of 1978 at about 8 o'clock in the evening. Um, our officers responded to an injured person in a vehicle. Once the fire department got there and the, and the uh, responding officers got there, they discovered that uh, there was a young lady I identified as Susan Schmidt shot to death in her vehicle. The identification technicians and the investigators that came out that originally investigated this case did an absolute great job. They collected forensic evidence from inside and outside of the vehicle. They photographed the scene. They photographed everything. Over the years, detectives continued to follow up on those leads and those calls that would come in. And at that point, that creates its algorithm. That's About a month and a half ago, we were reviewing the case again. We were looking at evidence to see what changes in technology or what things could have helped us further. It's just been upgraded in the last few years for the next generation of APHIS. It was the notification by um, identification technician Tom Pennington. Um, I know he was excited uh, the moment he, he was able to identify the information. Immensely valuable part of the process. Um, can't even imagine at some points my exhilaration from this knowing that as many people here at this PD had worked on this, and as much as they had worked really hard on it, just knowing that I could be some part of that group that worked as hard on it and be a valuable part to this, finding the solution to this, hopefully. Evidence that was found inside the vehicle was linked to a specific person, that being Edward Meinhold. We began to talk to people, family, friends, others that knew him, people that knew Susan, and based on all the interviews that we did, we were able to come up with what happened and of course presented that for to the county attorney's office. This is the interview I did with uh, Mr. Meinhold just recently in uh, Bristol, Virginia. Well, at this point, uh, Edward has been arrested. He is awaiting extradition in, in Virginia. So it is in the trial process. It is in the hands of the prosecutor. And so once he's extradited back here, we'll, we'll begin that process. It's, a, it's pretty amazing, to be honest with you, that the amount of evidence that we collected back then is still very viable today, uh, even after 37 years. The family does still live here. Uh, Mom and Dad live within the Phoenix area. And, uh, they're, you know, for them, I think it's a lot of closure. It's a lot of unanswered questions that they've had over the years as to who was responsible for killing their daughter. And, and it was very, uh, very emotional for them to, to learn of the information. That these cases are never forgotten. I review these cases, the, the other detectives that I work with, even the detectives that have worked here before me, we have always reviewed these cases. We look at the evidence. It is just a never-ending process that we will continue to do throughout my career and, and people after me. It may seem that there's nothing to look for, but there's always something we could review, always something to look at a different, and always having a different person, look at a different perspective. We had some incredible detectives work on this, it just, take a it just took a different perspective, some new technology, some different ways to approach a different way to that solution. It is an absolute wonderful feeling to know that I can go back to that family and give them those answers. You know, solving the case, making an arrest, putting the case together is very rewarding, but I think what's most rewarding is being able to go back to the family and give them those answers.